Hi, it's Christian here from the Zionworks team. I'm going to talk to you in this video about importing and editing songs. So first off, let's look at the location of the database. File, Options, Database tab. Here you'll find the directory where the database lives. And you can change this, clicking this button here. Uh, you might need to put the database in a completely different place. Perhaps you're using Dropbox or something like that for cloud storage of your database to synchronize it with all the people on your team. Um, you might need to put it in a different place, so there you go, that's how you do it. Also a note here, <coughs> password options. If you don't want to use the database password protection, that's fine, just tick this box and it'll unlock at startup. You never have to use the password. Um, also not here, your licensing information for CCLI, so your church's license number goes in there, and then it gets included uh, on copyright strings. Okay, so first off I'm just going to show you how to back up the database. Always good to keep regular backups. My database is tiny, but yours might be thousands of songs. So don't uh, lose out. Make sure you take a backup now and then. So the way you do that is you go to File, Export, Zineworks Backup. And that also does a backup of the settings at the same time. Pick the folder where you want it to <coughs> be backed up to. I'll just choose a folder there. And it's done. And it's created an archive file for you with everything in. And it's named with today's date and the number of songs in the database. And you can now just take that, pop it on a USB stick and take it home, put it somewhere safe or put it on a network drive, email it to somebody, whatever you need to do. Okay, the rest of this tutorial I'm going to talk to you about song editing. Okay, I'm going to start off with a new song. So I'm going to click Add Song. And I'm going to... Um, I want to put a song in called Above All, Above All Powers, Above All Kings, and I haven't got any lyrics for it, so I'm going to go on the internet to get some. So I found a website that's got some lyrics in. Here we are. And uh, some quick scan through these. Verse 1, verse 2, chorus, verse 1, verse 2, chorus, chorus, and then ending bit. So I'm just going to copy the text from here, save my fingers typing verse 1, verse 2, and a chorus. Those are the unique bits, so that's all I need to put in my database. Copy. And back into the song editor in Zineworks. Click in the lyrics box, right click, paste. Now notice what's happened here. Zineworks has split up the text that was pasted from the web page into sections, three sections. And it looks pretty good. All we need to do is just tidy up these verse markers because we don't want to sing those. Okay, <clears throat> and there was a little ending section as well, wasn't there? So we'll, we'll um, put that on Control Enter to do a new section and paste in there. There we have it. And I'll just complete the, um, the song details. There's a copyright string going in there, and the words all blush and the blank. There we are. We're all done. Hit save, and in it goes into the database. And that song is indexed now as well. So if we search for a word um, crucified, can I spell it right? I really can't spell. There we are. So there's are two songs there with the word crucified in. So we want above all. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like now. This new song that we've just entered. Supply a theme to it. I'm going to apply a very simple white and black theme to it. So we can have a look at it. There we are. Four slides. Hit fade in. We're ready to sing. Off we go. Simple as that to get a song into your database. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do a few more advanced things with this song now. Um, let's go back in to the song. <clears throat> song edit. Sorry, select it first. There we are. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag the sections because these are all colored blue at the moment. And blue is the color for verses. So these two are verses, but this one is chorus. So if we right click in here, we can choose chorus. And this last bit is, a, is an ending really. So if we right click in that, um, we can choose ending. <clears throat> that's a different colour again. So that's looking good. Now why do we bother marking up the sections like that? 
Well, the reason is that, let's have a look, we save, and if we um, present it again, <coughs> now you can see the colours of the slides have actually changed to match the colours of the sections that we saw in the song editor. And you'll probably notice that the chorus is in italics. Now the reason for that is that the theme, the white and black theme, has got a rule in there that says that choruses should be in a different style and that they should be in italics. So one benefit of tagging up your song to mark the sections like choruses and bridges and things is that you, you the themes that you apply can actually take effect on those sections and change the style. Okay, what we're going to do now, <coughs> let's just delete that from the list again. What we're going to do now is <coughs> go back in and edit the song and we're going to do something a bit more advanced. Um, <coughs> actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a spelling mistake because I want to show you correcting spelling mistake later on. <coughs> let's just create a spelling mistake there. Right. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to do an arrangement now. Now the point of an arrangement is that you can create different structures of ways of singing the same song. <clears throat> it might be that you've got um, a youth service where a particular song is sung a different way normally with more repeats or um, different things. It might be that you've got a hymn and there's a short version of it with three verses and a long version of it with five verses. So you can use arrangements to manage these kinds of things. So click on the arrangements tab and you'll see that there's a standard arrangement already in there. Now every single song will have a standard arrangement and it will just be whatever is in the lyrics box. So you can just use that and never bother about creating a, a custom arrangement for a song. That's fine. Um, I'm going to create a new arrangement for this one. So I'm going to click new arrangement here. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it normal because um, this is the normal way that uh, it might be sung. So we have a prompt to confirm that's okay. Yes. I'm going to make this the new default arrangement. Okay. Now, this box on this side here is where I drag and drop the sections across to build up my arrangement. So I'm going to start by just adding all of those. Click that button there to add them all. And then I need to add um, I need to add a verse one, a verse two. The ending needs to move down the bottom. I need two choruses, one in there, and one repeated chorus in there. So that's my arrangement. And all I need to do is save now. Now let's present this again. See what we've got. Apply that same theme again. Ah, there we are. Now we've got more slides. We've got eight slides in total. And you can see that the arrangement is respected here. Verse 1, verse 2, chorus, verse 1, verse 2, chorus, chorus, and ending. So that's great now. And if that's the way that you, that you sing that song rigidly, then you can just click through this now without even thinking. You don't need to jump around anywhere. You just need to click clicking the key, pressing the mouse, or using the space bar to go through the song. <clears throat> now, you probably remember that we had a spelling mistake, and we're projecting live now, and we just realized that it says laid behind instead of laid behind, and you'd probably be quite embarrassed at this point, having just entered this song, and wish that you could correct it live. Well, you can. What you do is select the song over here, click edit, and just go in and change the text. So let's just see if we can view this at the same time. Might be a bit tricky. Um, let's scroll down to it. I'll push it over here so that you can, you can see the live view. That's best, isn't it? So we just click in here, type the missing E. Remember you're watching here what's live being displayed, click save, and as if by magic it gets fixed. Now the beauty of it is not only is that one fixed there that we're on, but this one down here is also fixed. Because we're using an arrangement, we've got the same source of data. Remember it's only in the database once, one copy of the chorus, but the arrangement 
is, uh, is used three times there, the chorus, and they're all fixed. So that's a really neat, neat thing. Okay, um, just finally, I'm going to show you how to restore the database because it might be that you've um, had some problem, the database is corrupted, or somebody's deleted files off your computer, or you've had your computer stolen, or something happened, and you need to restore your database. Well, I'm just going to assume that this database is ruined now. I need to restore it back to that 10 song version that I had. So I've got 11 songs at the moment, so we'll be able to see if it restores, it should go back to 10. So we go to File, Import, Designworks Restore. And then we get to just pick one of the backups that we made before, the one we made at the very start. And it tells us that it's about to back up the database. Are we sure we want to do this? And do we want to restore the application settings as well? Well, we don't. We're not bothered about restoring application settings. It's just the database we want. So we'll say no to that. And we'll watch to see what happens over here. Restore was successful. And there we go, 10 songs left. So we're all back to how we were at the very start of the video. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching.